A very important characteristic of powders to appreciate is the way they can behave differently depending on whether it's a confined or an unconfined stress environment. If you look at this ceramic we have in a confined beaker and we impose a stress on the top, very little flow occurs because it's a stiff system and it doesn't respond well to being forced in terms of its flow. Whereas if you put it into a container with an aperture at the bottom and you open that port, that valve, the powder will flow under gravity because of the unconfined nature of the regime. So it's performance or its behavior and flow properties in these two different environments is quite different. If we contrast the ceramic to a flower and put them through the same experiments, you can see we're in a confined state, the flower displaces out of the way and allows the forced flow regime to cause it to move. Put that same cohesive system into an unconfined environment, open the valve and very little flow occurs because it's not suited to unconfined flow conditions. So the perspective of one number to describe bulk powder behavior across these different stress regimes is quite unrealistic. And in terms of understanding what properties are important to quantify to predict in process performance, it's very important to appreciate what those conditions are in the process before you can identify what parameters need to be quantified. Perhaps the most important external variable that influences powder behavior is aeration. The introduction of air into a powder column or the aerated nature of a powder as it discharges from a silo or is blended in a high shear blender changes the bulk flow properties. Non-cohesive systems, if we introduce air into the bottom of the powder column, the powder bed dilates, the particle mechanical contacts are reduced in terms of the number and the forces at those contact points, and the powder transforms from moderate flowing to fluid-like behavior in some cases. This can be an advantage if it's used in a well-engineered and controlled process, but it can also lead to flooding and uncontrolled scenarios within your process environment. So the introduction of air to a powder bed can transform its behavior from reasonable flowing powder to actually very liquid-like as it becomes fully aerated or even fluidized. And you can see that exhibited here as we transform from a loosely packed state to a fluidized state. Another external factor that influences powder flow is the extent to which it's sensitive to consolidation. Some materials are not particularly changed as a function of being consolidated through direct pressure or vibration. Others are highly sensitive and go from moderate flowing, like this slightly cohesive powder, which is a flower sample, to no flow at all after being subjected to vibration or consolidation. And here we can see the sample put on a tapping device to subject it to some compaction, and just a few taps transforms the way the powder behaves. Its density change might be in the order of 10, 20 or 30 percent. But in terms of its flow property changes, it now might be five times to 10 times less likely to flow. So 500 percent to 1000 percent change in flow properties as a function of consolidation. And from the perspective of process challenges that that presents, these are significant issues that need to be understood and characteristics that need to be quantified. Another external variable is a powder's sensitivity to strain rate or flow rate. Some powders flow in roughly the same way, irrespective of the speed at which they're required to flow. Others are highly sensitive. And a unique attribute to powders, in contrast to liquids, is that cohesive systems particularly may flow more poorly at slower flow rates. This experiment shows here a powder contained within a beaker, simply being stirred at reasonable strain rate with a spatula. If we contrast how fluid it seems at relatively high flow rates to how it then behaves when the spatula is moved slowly, you can see the powder bed begins to lock up as the air is extruded locally and the particles pack together and lock together more enthusiastically. Since we started in the business of powder characterization, segregation has always been a problem. Particles reorganizing themselves on the basis of their size differences or their density differences can cause major processing issues and quality problems with finished products. This is typical across many industries but the pharmaceutical industry where small particles of active drug ingredient are very sensitive to the effects of segregation. Here we can see in this experiment two component materials with different particle sizes. When subjected to vibration, the particles will naturally reorganize themselves with the larger particles at the top and the smaller particles at the bottom as a consequence of the powder bed becoming temporarily dilated and the smaller particles falling below the larger particles. The opposite phenomena can occur during fluidization where larger, denser particles sink to the bottom of a fluidized column and the smaller ones or lighter ones are lifted to the surface. Certain powders are highly sensitive to electrostatics. This means that they can accumulate charge on the surface uh, of the particles and the particles then coordinate themselves in a 
greater structure based on this charge that either causes them to attract one another or repel one another. And these charges can be introduced within the processing and handling environment whereby friction between particles or friction between particles and the process equipment transfers energy to the surface and powders that are sensitive to electrostatics can transform in nature from being free-flowing to actually quite cohesive and adhesive presenting again process challenges and problems. Caking is a mechanism which affects a number of powders particularly those in the food industry or those that are generally hydrophilic and it's a mechanism whereby particles that were formerly independent become bonded chemically or mechanically to one another forming a large structure made up of formerly independent particles. Here we can see milk powder that's been subjected to elevated humidity conditions for a period of 48 hours. When it was introduced to this environment it was initially a free-flowing powder but as you can see the process of elevated humidity has caused the particles to bond with one another, moisture migrating from one particle to the next, dragging molecular structure with it and causing a mechanical bond. The result is a caked powder with a substantial mechanical strength. And we can see that imposing quite a large force on this caked compact actually causes it to break and, and fracture, but not back into its primary independent particles, but indeed still strong agglomerated components. The result of this, if it happens in processing, is that you can have blockages, stoppages, material that you can't get out of your storage equipment, and it's transformative in terms of the downstream functionality of the powder.